Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So it has been a very long time since I uploaded my last video. I've been super busy with work and life and just everything. So at the minute, as we all know, life is a bit rubbish, but every cloud has a silver lining. We're obviously all dealing with coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. And now there's a lockdown. So I just thought that whilst we're all going through this together, I would come back because I've had so many messages from you guys asking when the next video is, asking for my advice on things. And I know that for a lot of you, my videos are a bit of a break, a bit, a bit of something positive um, that just breaks your day up. So I thought while I've got this opportunity, while I'm stuck at home, while I can't leave, I might as well film what I'm getting up to for you guys. I've put it already on my Instagram that I'm going to be doing this. I want to try and vlog every day if I can, just because even though it might be the same stuff I'm doing, at least it's something new each day for you guys to look forward to. If that'll happen or not, it depends. Um, this is day number one of lockdown. Uh, it was only announced last night at half eight that we the country was going into lockdown. So I really don't know what to expect um, from my daily routine. I'm gonna try and keep routine and I'm gonna try and incorporate new things into my day. So we will just have to see how this goes. But with that all said, I'll stop blabbing now. We'll go around to the horses and we'll crack on with the okay, day. Okay, so a quick little update before we go around to see the horses. Is this boy here? So this is Balto. He is our rescue dog that we literally got four days ago. So he's very new, he's still settling in. He's just under two years old and he's a Hussey cross German Shepherd. He is, so he's a rescue and as I said, we only just got him. The circumstances were his previous owners had a child, they could no longer look after Balto. Um, so we've taken him on. He's a really good boy and he's proving to be part of the family very quickly. He's settling in very well. Um, at the minute we're having him on the lead around the horses and things like that. But you'll be seeing a lot of him and sort of our training as we're progressing with him at the moment in the videos to come. So I just thought I would quickly introduce you, but that's a nice positive that we have rescued a dog. Um, and you'll definitely be seeing him in my videos. Balto! Come here. Okay, so as normal, the chickens need letting out and the piggies need feeding. So we'll go do that now. Morning, piggies. Morning, pig pigs. As always, nothing's really changed with the piggies. Apart from Pickle had his the vet out to cut down his tusks. There we go. Morning, pigsters. Right, let's go let them chickens out. A new boy has to stay over here because you're not allowed in the open yet. So all the he runs around the locked areas. Ah, 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 fine. But the wide open where there's no fencing, he has to stay. Let's go let these chickens out. So all of their feeders now are these little automatic ones that they're meant to stand on, but they don't. So we have to put a brick on them. This is just because we've had a little bit of an issue with sort of a few rats coming into the um, chickens. So to stop that, we're trying to limit the food sources. Yes, you stay there, thank you. Let the 
the group out. You coming, girls? Here we go. Hello. And do that feeder. And these ones are a bit more sensitive, so they've got vet wrap wrapped around the bottom because they didn't like it on their feet. Here we go. <laughs> so I very nearly forgot to feed the bunnies, which would have been bad. So normally I don't do the morning routine because I'm at work from 6am. So my parents normally do it for me. Excuse me, Bum Bum. So I'm a bit rusty on the whole thing. Cleaned the rabbits out the other day, and you would not think it at all. Come on, here you go. Those of you, if you remember, I scatter feed most of them, apart from Cholula and Ariel. Looks like we're getting low on bunny food, which is not good given the current situation. So I might have to see about getting some more of that today. Here you go, sweetie. And where is the little one? She must be in there. Oh, she's up there. Didn't even know you could get Okay, up. so they are all the small animals done. And it's finally time to go and do the horses. Good morning, Caramel. And then here we have Taffy. So now it's a bit of a race to get the horses' haynets in, get their rugs on, get them turned out. Hello, grumpy man. Heel. You've been laid in all your shavings. Good boy. You're an old boy. You got your eye. Good man. So we need to pop in, give them the hay nets, rug them up, turn them out. It'll all be done quite quickly, so I'll try not to focus too much on that this morning. As I say, I've not been doing this routine for a couple of months now because I've not been here in the morning. So I am a bit rusty actually and we've actually had someone coming as a stable hand to help muck out so it's all down to us today because that definitely won't be happening we can't have people coming to the farm Okay, so I have just pretty much finished mucking out and I thought I'd just clarify for anyone that's new here and doesn't know about my channel or anything. 
what the situation is. So I am very, very lucky that I live on a farm. So the horses are basically on our back door, which means I don't have any sort of restrictions when it comes to traveling to see them or anything. It's literally at the back of our house. So I am so lucky that that's the situation, but I just thought I'd sort of clarify for people, that's why I'm able to do all of this. Um, and I was just thinking when I was mucking out, I don't know about you guys, but for me, mucking out is like therapy. Like, I just think through things and sort of, it's my thinking time when I'm mucking out, because you've not really got anything to focus on, you're just sort of getting on with the task, it just gives me time to think. But anyway, I was just thinking about the absolute massive impact this is going to have on our community. Obviously, every single community is affected. Life itself is not normal. But for horse riders, there's also the added stress of if you've got your horse on livery, if you normally go to a riding school, the riding schools are closed, livery yards are under massive strain. I was talking to my friend this morning, they've got slots when they can go and see their horses. Some livery yards aren't open at all and if it's the case that they aren't on DIY, then you're not allowed to go and see your horse and things like that. So it's massive, like just the thought of not being able to go and see my horses and being told I can't look after them anymore is so scary. So I really feel for anyone who's struggling at the minute, maybe you're missing out on your riding lessons, you're missing sort of that social aspect of it as well, or you're actually just struggling to get to your horse. Um, there's also the sort of issues of people bulk buying and panic buying, which now means we've actually got a shortage for haylage and things like that. So we've got six horses and that's a lot to think about in terms of feeding and stuff like that. And I was just thinking about it all and I was just like, even things like eventing, all the events have been cancelled, there's no shows. Even like the Olympics, people have been working for years for certain things like this year I was hoping to compete that's not going to happen now um, so much has changed and um, for personally in my life a lot has changed I was meant to get a new job that's not happening I was meant to be moving house that's not happening everything's just on pause everything's on hold and so it is a really stressful time and whilst I don't want these videos to be negative or be stressful i also want you to know that i am still in touch with reality i know it might seem that i'm going about my everyday life on the farm and it hasn't affected me but it has and i'm so aware of everything that everyone's going through and my sister's a nurse my brother-in-law's a key worker my boyfriend will soon be a key worker there's so much that i know everyone's going through and i'm in a very lucky position so i just kind of wanted to put that out there just wanted to say I know what we're all going through, I know it's rubbish, but I am just going to try and keep positive on this channel, I don't think that means I've lost touch with reality. Um, and with that said, I'm going to go and get my breakfast. Okay, so I finished my breakfast. I'm not gonna lie, that was like double the size of a normal breakfast, but the avocado needed using and the eggs needed using, so looks like I'm having a late or very little lunch. Um, but yeah, so I've had breakfast now. I think what I want to do is create a list of things to do to keep me occupied. Um, because one of the issues is that I get up very early. So for example now, it is 10 to 9. And the horses are out, the stables are mucked out, I've had breakfast, and I get to this point in the day and I'm already like, hmm, what do I do now? So I think I'll create a list of things that I can come up with doing. Um, not just today, during the week, during the next week, whatever and that gives you an idea of some things that might be included in videos so we'll go ahead and do that i might put a little question on my instagram for anything that you guys are doing to keep busy to give me a few ideas so if you're not following me on my instagram i'm going to be very active on there and i'm going to be active on there for the next week or so um possibly even more depending how long this lasts so do follow me it's at little pet channel and then we can have a nice interactive day um yeah i need to start babbling 
Okay, so, so far on my to-do list, this is in no particular order of what I'm going to do it in, but these are just a few things I've added so far. So I want to deep clean the stables, I want to bath Charlie, create some small animal enrichment, tidy my bedroom, training with Balto, lunge caramel and groom all of the horses. Now whilst this is actually something I could probably get done in like a day or a day and two, I'll try and drag it out a little bit because if I do all of this, I'll have nothing left to do for three weeks. Okay guys, so I am now in the greenhouse and it's a little bit later on. So at the moment, due to us all being sort of confined and I'm trying to find this spot where the sun's like in my eyes, due to us all being very confined at the moment, I think it's a really good time to focus on enrichment for animals because we're kind of feeling what it's like to be an animal in that if you're a rabbit that's stuck in a hutch with nothing to do, that's like us being locked in our house currently. So I'm gonna try and push myself to do a lot more enrichment for my pets. Obviously, I do a lot of enrichment anyway. Um, I try to give them the best sort of life that I can give them. But while I've got the opportunity to spend a bit more time in it, I want to. So I want to take the most of this opportunity, spend a bit more time. The other day I planted some grass trays. So they're literally all the trays I no longer use for the rabbits that I fill with soil and put some grass seeds in. So I've just come to water them. They're not starting to germinate or anything yet, I don't believe. So we're just going to give them a quick water and we'll see how they get on in the next few days. So I've got four trays, each for one rabbit. And we just doesn't help that the um, spout on this is broken, so it kind of ends up a little bit soaking. So there we go. So these are all of my trays. It, the idea is that the grass will grow, and then each rabbit has their own source of fresh grass. Because at the moment, none of my runs are on grass or anything. So that's all they needed doing today and then again it's just a case of keeping an eye on them we have a lot of things growing in here at the minute all these lupins down here and things um, none of them some of them are going in the veg patch so I might if I get the opportunity plant a few more things in here this week um, like basil and different herbs for the rabbits um, but so far I'm just doing my little grass trays down there. Okay guys, so obviously we're around at the stables constantly, we're touching things all the time. So at the minute I'm taking extra precautions to make sure I'm cleaning things around the stables. I've got some antibacterial spray that I've diluted in this bottle. It is a branded bottle but I'm not using the brand that's in here, it's just um, some antibacterial wash um, that's been diluted down so that it is pet safe. And then I have some cloths. So all I'm going to do is pop on some gloves just because um, the stuff can be quite sort of not corrosive on your hands but it just dries your hands out so I'm just going to pop some gloves on just to make sure that my hands are protected and then we're going to go around and we're going to clean the areas that we touch constantly at the stables. This is something that a lot of people won't think about. Obviously you, you're cleaning light switches in your house and your remotes and your phones and things like that. Um, everything that we touch daily but we also need to think about everything that we are touching in the stables so let's go get spraying um now at the minute i'll just add we are sort of cleaning the stables and so certain areas have been cleaned quite a bit um obviously it's a stable it's a barn it's not going to be spotless all i'm trying to do is reduce the bacteria that were sort of on the things that we touch constantly. So one way I like to think about this is going from the inside, everything you would touch on your way in. So for example, a light switch.
example of a few of the things that you could do with giving a spritz every now and again. Obviously, you're handling things, just make sure you wash your hands after you've been around to the stables. Everyone does, don't touch your face when, while you're around here, just in case there is anything that's been passed on. It's all about precautions, guys. So, you know, take extra precautions, clean some things that you wouldn't normally, disinfect something that you wouldn't normally. Um, obviously, there's so many things we touch. I'm not gonna go through my entire grooming kit and clean every single handle, every single brush that I touch. I'll just not touch my face and wash my hands in between. Um, and make sure that once I've finished grooming, I wash my hands, do you know what I mean? Like, let's not go insane with this. But then again, there are extra bits you can do, such as that. So I'm now going to give Charlie a bath. Now Charlie has been living out for about a month with out having really anything done to him he's had a couple of grooms and stuff like that but he looks like a mud monster i'll warn you all now before i start getting comments saying i don't look after him and stuff like that i do but he lives in a muddy field and he's not very clean and i don't have time to groom him every single day when i'm working full time so i'm taking this opportunity now to give him a bath and to give him a clip and well not a clip but a bit of a tidy up and yeah we're just going to do that. So I'll go get Charlie in a second and we will give him a Okay, bath. so I've prepared everything ready for Charlie to come up. The only issue is going to be, it's so windy today that even though it's sunny, um, filming is going to be an issue. So sorry if I have to do voiceover to this. But as you can see, I've got everything outside. I've got his bucket, I've got his shampoo. Um, I've got everything I need. It's just going to be a quick wash. It might just be his legs and his tail. Here he is, the main man. So someone is long overdue a good old groom. His tail's been hacked off because of all the mud. And obviously we did that. Um, but yeah, he'd soon have grass. That's that spring grass. But as you can see, you need a good old groom. So the first thing I did was brush out his feathers because he had a lot of dry mud in there. The feathers meant they were doing their job and protecting his legs from the mud. Um, however, sort of, you get this build of the mud and it sort of wraps around the hairs and that can be quite uncomfortable for them. So I brushed off what I could and then I wet his legs using very soapy water to break down that mud um, and just gave them a rub all over and then it's important to sort of scrub the legs, try and get as much mud off as possible. This can mean that the feathers end up muckier in a way because obviously you're breaking down the mud and then it's going onto the hairs. So then once I've washed all these legs using soap, it then just hose them all off and get all the soap out and then break down any mud while I'm at it. Next up was to try and give Charlie a bit of a groom. The wind got so strong at this point that it was quite difficult. So then I decided to move him into his stable. Okay, so due to the fact that Charlie, after about half an hour, loses all ability to stand still and concentrate, He's in his stable now, so I'm just going to quickly finish him off in there, and then I'll show you guys the end result. Okay then, so here is Charlie post-groom. Charlie! Hello, Fluffster. I've put his mane in the big pack just because I needed to get to his neck, but I will take that out before it goes out, otherwise it will get twisted. Um, I think I'm going to do that. So, he doesn't look amazing because he's a cop and at this time of year he's still big and fluffy but he looks so much better than he did. Once his legs have dried, they're not gonna be clean, but all the sort of bits of mud that's stuck in it are gone. His tail's nice and fluffy. Um, his coat's coming out because it's shedding season, but he does look a hell of a lot better than he did. And it's taken a lot of work. I'm not actually filmed that much of it because I was so busy actually doing it. Um, but little baby steps, we'll do some more tomorrow and the next day. And hopefully by the end of the week, he'll be looking amazing. I want to tackle his beard and try and get as much of his fur out um, as possible as he is now shedding. But we'll see. Taking it step by step. This is absolutely loving this weather. Even if you are fluffy still. Can't wait for these summer coats to come through. Chili's been his usual naughty self by eating in the gate. There's Lucy. Oh, Lucy's feel tilt and fell down. Um, that happened during the uh, storms. Luckily, she wasn't in the field. You're not meant to eat over the fence. We've got grass down there. Yep, chill. Yep, peppers. No. Oh boy. 
and then little ones over there. All right, let's go tidy up. today's vlog here I've just been editing and it's quite long already and I want to save some for the other days so, so I hope you enjoyed this video I know it's been a bit different and I'll see you guys tomorrow hopefully provided all goes well with filming tomorrow's little vlog